Are you seriously fired up about growing as a leader in business or church-based ministry? Are you feeling somewhat frustrated about not having realized your full potential in what you've been called to do? Could you do with someone to help you get some extra clarity or to be a sounding board for your plans and ideas? Great athletes have coaches, so do great leaders. The right leadership coach for you will result in an increased sense of clarity, direction, and purpose, dramatically increasing the results you achieve. Achieve. If you're ready to step up, contact Errol to book a free, no obligation, introductory coaching session and see whether Errol is the right coach for you. Errol takes the lessons learned from his own leadership journey and from his extensive research to help leaders and entrepreneurs to step into their biggest challenges and rise to their next level. Email admin at errollawson.com right now to schedule your call. Hello and welcome again to the Rising Generation Leadership Podcast with me, Errol Lawson. And my special guest today is Keith Poole. Keith is the founder, owner of Equip for Success, a leadership development consultancy based in the UK. Now, today is a special one because we're actually in Florida at the John Maxwell um, Conference, the IMC Conference. We're both actually on the John Maxwell um, coaching, training and speaking team. And we're here getting some input from John himself and great to meet Keith today. happens that we're both from um, Birmingham or near Birmingham in the UK and we've got to connect. So um, Keith, tell us about, just give us a glimpse. Hi Keith, <laughs> welcome. Hi Evan. <laughs> You're right. I'm good, thank you. Um, give us a glimpse of what you're up to in the world right now and just tell us a bit of your bio. Okay, well, um, as Evel said, I'm based in, in a place called Wombard, which is just southwest of Birmingham. Um, what I, what I do, what my wife and I do, is we, we direct an organization, as Hale said, called Equip for Success, and that primarily trains leaders, leaders, pastors of all ages, uh, male and female, um, to be the best they can be. So it doesn't matter whether you're in business, it doesn't matter whether you're at a college, it doesn't matter whether you're pastor of a church, but we are here to add value to people, to help them find find their purpose, and then to help them and uh, to coach them through the obstacles that stop them from, from fulfilling their purpose that they have. It's great. It's great. It's great. And um, how did you know that this is what um, God was calling you to do, Keith? How did you know that this line of ministry was what God was calling you to do? Well, you know, I've been born again now for about 31 years. And, and ever since, um, from, from, from when I first got born again, I've, in the early days, I had an interest in leadership. I've always, for myself, all the books that I've gravitated towards have always been leadership, whether that be business leadership or leadership within the church. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's a very long journey that I've been on where I've, I've sort of learned for myself. That's going to be the first step, find out equip myself and then from there it was about 10 years ago when we started equip for success and what i've learned to what i'm still learning we are again my wife and i are looking to pass on to other people because you passed out a few churches as well right yeah yeah we've uh, planted two churches one in south birmingham and one in lincoln and i was the assistant pastor of a church quite a large church in bristol uh, some years ago great great so um i love leadership journey because people are listening right now some are going to be church leaders some are going to be entrepreneurs the business owners um along that journey it's a long time working in this space um was there ever like a, a critical turning point maybe you were heading in one direction your leadership journey and something happened um a, a revelation a, a hard moment something happened that caused you to go in a completely different direction can you tell us that story well yeah that that that's really from a from a bad experience you know sometimes you can watch people and you don't watch and learn how to do things you watch and learn how not to do things right and f and from my from our perspective uh, we were part of a, a ministry some years ago and it was seemingly on the outside very successful but what i witnessed inside you know the leadership was quite overtly um heavy-handed okay. um, and they whilst they sought to build people up in trying to build people up they often tore them down right. so there's a lot of people who were hurt right. 
a lot of people who were very discouraged, disillusioned with leadership as a whole because of they were losing faith in the people who was leading them. Yeah. And from that moment, for myself, it was like, we, we, I need to do something here to, to empower people. So for me, the, the Quit for Success is all about empowering leaders, yeah. empowering people to be the best they can be. Sure. So every, every person's got their own style. Yeah. Every person's going to be different. They've got their own unique gifts and head abilities. But leadership is still leadership. Yeah, that's great. So what's been your biggest leadership challenge? The biggest, you know, the phrase goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Yeah. So, you know, the biggest problem I find with people is they don't realize they need to learn. You know, they say that most people finish reading books when they finish school. You know, and, and most people, if you talk to them and say, do you need to grow? Their response is going to be, well, I'm fine as I am. Yeah. Unless they have a major, major problem. Yeah. So most people are quite, you know, passive with their lives. So for a lot of people to convince them and to try and talk to them and say, look, you know, you can achieve far more than what you're achieving. You can be far better than what you are. You know, let's learn some skills. Let's add value to ourselves so that we can be better than what we are. So, so is that the challenge and getting them to think that way? Is that yes. What the same yeah. That is the right. biggest, the biggest problem. Right. The biggest challenge that for is that most with everybody? people. Everybody is that with like men, women? Is it senior pastors? Is it who who has that challenge? To some degree, everybody. Yeah. Um, there's no for me. There's no difference between male or female. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, the gender is, issue is irrelevant here. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, the older, the older people get, the more stubborn they get, right. and, the, and, and, and the less they want to change. In fact, I had a pastor say to me last year, it was um, New Year's Eve last year, 2017, yeah. and I was having a chat with him in McDonald's, yeah. and he, he said to me, he said, I've pastored for 38 years, why do I need to change? I'm changing for no one. Yeah. And in a very loving way, I said to him, well, you need to resign from the church then. Mm. Because if you don't want to change and you're not prepared to change in any way, how can you expect the people who lead, who you lead, to, yeah, to want to change? Because yeah, yeah. they're going to follow your example. So What do you do? Because I, I have no doubt that people are listening right now and they're saying, you know what, I can relate to that. Either it's their pastor or a church that they're familiar with, that they know they're aware of. And they're asking themselves too, like, how do they help someone get through that, you know? Um, you know, what advice would you give to that person who's thinking about, you know, kind of challenging that issue or resolving that problem? You know, the first thing I'd, I'd encourage people to do is don't argue with them. Because right. the tendency is, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm good with words, I'm good arguing, so I'm going to try and convince them. So we sit there and we try and have this conversation with them where they disagree yeah. and then we get frustrated, then we get disappointed, then we get angry. And then, but as I get older, I see that it's a complete waste of time. There is no, you never win when it comes to, you know, to an argument with someone who, who, who doesn't want to change. So my, my, my approach would be, and I'm not trying to sound spiritual here, but my first response would be, yeah, pray for them. Because, you know, we can't change people's hearts, but yeah, God can. So, so I'd pray for them to start with, and I would also just love them. You know, people people watch you. So if you model growth and you model change, yeah. they're going to watch what you do. And they're going to see that you're not just about an argument. Yeah. You're not just about winning. Yeah. You're proving them wrong. Well, people are but saying, they're listening, going, yeah, we've been doing that for years. And, you know, nothing's changed. Like, they're saying, we're just loving it. We're just, we don't want to disrespect our, our leaders. And, and they're there, they're, 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 you know, they're putting up with stuff, if you like. Um, you know, is there a line? There does come a point that, that I would never encourage anybody yeah. um, in a church to uh, to walk out on their church or their pastor. Um, I wouldn't really ever encourage that because, you know, at the end of the day, a pastor is a person and they, uh, and they do have a heart, even though some people may think their pastor doesn't. They do have a heart. So I would not ever try and get people to walk away from their church out of frustration because you'll take that frustration wherever you go and you'll take that disappointment wherever you go. But there does come a line after a long, 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 long time where if a person is not going to leave, you know, I can remember, I can remember when I first got saved many years ago, 
the, the church that I was in was a Baptist church and there was a young man who just come back from Bible college and they wanted to change things. There's only about five under 20s of which I was one. The rest were all old people and they never wanted to change. They wouldn't do anything different. They, I wouldn't say they hated the young people, but the young people weren't their best friends, put it like that. And we wanted to try and move things on. And, you know, the man who, who eventually became the pastor of the church was one of us young people. And I can remember him saying, you know, I've been praying that God's will be done in this church. And he said, well, as a 17 year old, I said, what's that supposed to mean? And he said, well, I'm gonna pray that, you know, God has got a purpose for this church. And whatever obstacle is in the way of this church progressing, you know, I want, I want that obstacle removed. And over a period of time, it was, it, it was a couple of years. You know, I'm not saying his prayers killed anybody. I'm not saying that, you know, God hated anybody here. Mm. What I'm saying is he prayed that God's will be done and That's that great. the church would advance. And amazingly, over a period of two, three years, those older people begin to, or began to graduate. Wow. As in they began to, they died, they, okay. you know, they passed on. Right. They passed over, whatever language you want to use. Graduate may be a better yeah. phrase. And then that cleared the way for the new generation for, for, the, for the new people to take over right. now please don't hear what yeah. i've not said yes i'm not saying that we go around praying that people die yes i'm not saying that at all i'm not saying that if we disagree with someone that we pray that god you know god takes him out and that so that we're proved right and they're proved wrong i didn't say that either you know so 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 that's not my intention at all but what i'm saying is you know king david was king even when saul was king that was God's purpose for him. Wow. David didn't go along trying to get rid of Saul yeah. so that he could sit on the throne. Right. He submitted to him, he, he served him, yeah. he respected him, he honored him. Yeah. And through the process of time, yeah. Saul made his own mistakes yeah. and he was removed and then David was able to take over. Brilliant, brilliant Keith, I love that. Um, just getting into the, it's a lot of, you know, it's such a big topic, right? Um, just wanna get a bit into your sort of your routine and stuff. Now John, Maxwell says that the secrets to your success are hidden in your daily routine. Typically speaking, what do the first 90 minutes of your day look like? The first, the first 90 minutes of my day is, with, with all honesty, struggling to get out of bed. Okay. Okay, now, you know, I hear, I hear a lot of people say, you know, are you a morning person or are you an evening person? Yeah. For me, I'm neither. Okay. So I'm not a morning person. Um, I'm not an evening person. Okay. When do I peak? <laughs> I peak? I peak around one o'clock. Okay. That's my, that's, that, that's the best. My lunchtime is the best part of every day. Okay. So I, I, I wake up slowly and I end the day slowly. Okay. But in the middle, that's when I'm on, on five and on, on all in cylinders. So for me, I he I've heard for so many years that one, sh one should get up and the first thing you should Has do it always is been pray. And that is the first thing you do is you get up and pray. The first yeah. thing you do is you read your Bible. Yeah. And they've, they've implied that if you don't do that, then, you, then you've, like, you've, you've failed as a Christian. Yeah. You know, you are a, some slacker yeah. who, can't, who doesn't have the discipline to get out of bed. Yeah. Well, for me, I know what I'm like. And, and for years, I struggled to get up and pray because I just want to fall asleep. And it would be painful extremely painful so you know i i looked at myself and said i'm flogging a, flogging a dead horse here because I, there's no benefit in me doing this apart from trying to make myself look good when other people ask me what i do when i wake up yeah. so so generally i wake up and i start work yeah. sorry to disappoint you there <laughs> so i wake up i wake up and start work yeah. and make sure my children have gone to school but then in the middle of the day that's when i would study that's when I would pray. That's when I would go for a walk and pray. That's when I would spend time with God. Now, for some people, they, they can't handle that because it's like, you should pray first thing on the morning. Yeah, and you know, and, and, with, in all the interviews that you've done on, this, on the podcast, we've heard every variation from like, and these are all internationally recognized men and women. Um, and we've heard it so clearly, summer morning, summer night, some have loads of kids, some have no kids, some have different routines and what have you. Um, we, we know the Bible says, right, you know, meditate in the word of the Lord day and night, you know, um, Joshua. 
um, and there's an instruction given. But there is something about understanding your design, knowing your strengths, knowing when you're in your zone. For some of yeah. us, that's going to be in the middle of the day, some in the morning, some in the night, and, and working with that, with wisdom. I think when you look at what, 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 you, what you've just said about, you know, um, remembering God first thing on the morning yeah. and again at the end of the day. Yeah. For me, I, I wouldn't take that as the first thing I do when I wake up at six o'clock would be to pray. Yeah. For me, that, 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 those verses would encompass more of the fact that all of the time, mm. God is on my mind. Mm. Now, I'm not, I'm not using that as an excuse to not pray, mm. but, and I'm not saying that I never wake up and pray. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, for, as a general rule, yeah. I, I peak at lunchtime. Okay. So, so but, but for me, I'm aware that God is on my mind when I wake up. Okay. God is on my mind when I go to bed. Okay. And you can ask my family. That's <clears throat> great, man. You can ask my wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. My conversation will be God-centered all the time. That's great, man. So whether it's morning or evening or lunchtime, yeah. it's there. Yeah. So I don't take it as a literal morning and evening. I take it more of a principle of he's on your mind all the time. Okay. So um, one thing that John has been talking about with us is that some people, they have high aspirations and low habits um, and the two don't go together. What are, the, what are the key habits that have contributed towards your success as a leadership coach, trainer, speaker, minister? The two words that I, would, that I use all the time would be to, uh, to be consistent yep. or to be persistent. Mm -hmm. So consistent is doing the same things regularly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's the way I use the word. And persistent would be to never give up, but to keep going. So I can remember um, another story for you. You can tell I've been listening to John. <laughs> but another story, um, my father died 20 years ago in March um, 1998. And I can remember my mom, who is also a Christian woman, and she was praying, reading the Bible after he died. And she came to me and she said, Keith, I said, it's just a waste of time. I said, it feels like my prayers have reached the ceiling. I'm reading the Bible. I said, I have no clue what I've read. I have no clue what it means. It just makes no sense after the death of her husband, my father. And I can remember saying to her, mom, you know what you gotta do? Just keep going. Just keep doing the discipline of what you know and eventually the fog will lift. So, so the, 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 what do I do daily? Just make sure that I am consistent in what I do, do it regularly, but never give up. You know, it's a bit like when you want to lose weight in it. Yeah. You know, if you look at the people who've been to Slimming World, there's a free advert for them. Yeah. You know, they talk about eating the right thing regularly. And even when you've had a bad day, you pick yourself up, push yourself off and you carry on doing what you know you should be doing. Great, great. So you've got to keep doing that. So what's your biggest weakness as a leader? My, my biggest weakness, I'm sure my family would answer that better than me. I'm, I'm impatient. Okay. I want everything yesterday. And what's the biggest strength? I'm impatient. <laughs> I, always think your always biggest, I always think your biggest strength is your biggest weakness. Yeah, yeah. Um, to the and, extreme, right? Yeah. So for me, yes, my impatience yeah. is a frustration at times, yeah. but equally because I'm, because I lack patience at times, it, yeah. it drives me to want to get to do where other people would, would be quite passive. Yeah. You know, you have to be a certain type of person to be impatient. You're not a passive by nature. Yeah. Who have been your top three biggest mentors in your leadership journey so far? Um, the top three, not in any order, I would say, but the biggest, one of the biggest men for me has got to be the pastor of the church where I went to when I lived in South Africa, which was Ray McCauley. Ray some, McCauley, yeah. some of you may have heard of Ray McCauley, Pastor Ray. He was run up to Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Universe. Really? Um, and he pastored the church in wow. Johannesburg. Wow. And uh, his church is around 40,000 people okay. now. But I, but I still, I still consider him as my pastor, okay, even, so though, Ray even though we're not there. So Ray McCauley is a big one for me. Yes. Um, in my very, very early days, he would have to be a man called Mark Birchall. I don't know if you've heard of Mark. Mark, he's based in Netherton, near Dudley in the West Midlands. Um, 
he was the man who pastored the church when I first got born again. Okay. And I learned an incredible amount of stuff from, from him. Okay. He's still pastoring the same church and he's going very well, building new buildings and that's yeah, expanding, cool. which is great. And then the, the third person for me, well, I'll probably go three and four really. I can't really say three. Okay. I can never, I always have to want more, don't I? Okay. The two people that I've read about and I've, from an example, yeah. would be Nelson Mandela. Okay. okay. Now, I, I've, I met him once in South Africa. But I don't, I've never, I, I don't know him personally as a personal mentor in that yeah. sense. But from watching his life, from watching what he said, reading his biography and being around in South Africa when he was released from um, prison and when he became the, the president, yeah. you know, watching the way he conducted himself, how he lived. Yeah. Incredible, incredible example. Okay. Um, and then the, then the other one really would have to be John Maxwell. Um, you know, I've again, I've I've met him a few times. I've read his books from when I was in my teens. Um, so now, yeah, when, having come a full journey, I'm now part of the John Maxwell team, okay. using his material to train others. So, okay. um, but just how he leads people. Let me dig in a bit to those those relationships real quick, right? So, Ray, Mark, um, John, and, and Nelson. Um, what's been the biggest piece of wisdom? you've gotten from each of those people from 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 Nelson it has to be about forgiving people mm. you know when people have treated him the way they did and yet he comes out from prison becomes a president without any animosity any hate and he's willing to forgive people speak to them Amazing. as if they they'd never done anything wrong yeah. um, awesome example of a, of a man of character yes um, incredible man so forgiveness from him yeah. um, from from John Maxwell it has to be the relational the, the relational leader right. you know we've heard you've heard about um, you know, leadership is influence yeah. so the way he can relate to people the way he has time for people yeah. um, is exemplary yeah. you know the guy is an incredibly busy man yeah. um, achieved incredible amounts of success he's had an incredible amounts of success but for, for me I watch him and I've read his books it's all about the relating leader you know getting people to add value to them to help them um, so that's that, that's that one with him yeah. with Ray McCauley he's definitely a a model of a of a church leader because he, he planted the church and he's grown the church to to, to over 40,000 people now so he's had he was he's been involved in the the apartheid era or the anti-apartheid to to end the apartheid era. Um, so from his role as a leader of leaders, the guy is second to none. Um, the way Mark. Oh, well, just to say that, just one thing about Ray. Yeah. All of his team, all the people under him, yeah. are all leaders in their own right. Okay. But he leads he leads the leaders. Right. So he, he's an incredible man. And then for Mark. Yeah, I found yeah, Mark's been an incredible. Mark's been an incredible um, example of a communicator to me. Yeah. You know, when I was when I first got saved at 17, um, the way he would communicate to young and old, and the way he, his example when people hated him. Um, as a young man, that would be quite easy to get quite rude. And, and quite obnoxious towards people, but he's always kept his dignity, and he's always kept his 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 politeness and his love for people, and that, that's never detracted from who he is. Yeah. So again, that's that that was a big example to me as a 17 year old, how to conduct yourself with people who don't believe in you. That's awesome, mate. That's awesome, awesome. Um, what's the one thing you're most fired up about right now? Just wrapping up now. What's the one thing you're most fired up about right now? You know, for me, I, you know, I, I was in a, I was in Sheffield in England um, two Saturdays ago, um, training three church, three churches and and their leaders, pastors and and their leaders, and I and I said this to them then. I said, for me. Uh, uh, my, the, the biggest thing that I enjoy more than anything else is helping people. 
That's why I'm trying to... When you make it as simple as, as you can make it. Yeah. And what I mean by helping people, if that means putting out the rubbish, then that's what it means. But, but for me, what I mean by helping people is helping people learn, helping people grow, yeah. you know, helping people who, who don't know what their they, the goals are in life. They have no clue what they should do. Yeah. And then just inspiring them to fulfill their dreams and then empowering them to be able to um, to go after their dreams. So for me, my my biggest aspiration, you know, I'm in my happy place when I'm teaching people and coaching people. Yeah. Um, and then for me, the happy place becomes happier when I see those people's eyes light up and receive and learn from what you've said. Because they do think, man, what I've said has made a difference to those people. That's brilliant, mate. And then, um um, how do people find out more about you? Where, where do they go? Do you have a social media handle, a website? How can they find out more about your work and connect to what you're doing? Yeah, well, I have a few. Um, Equip for Success, the website is simply equip and the number four, equipforsuccess.org. Um, I do have a John Maxwell website, which is uh, John C. Maxwell uh, yeah, group.com forward slash then my name, Keith Poole. And you'll see all the um, the information on there about what I do with the John Maxwell team. On Facebook, I'm just simply Keith Poole, or again, just the Equip for Success. Again, on Facebook, on Twitter, is just my name, Keith Poole. So it's pretty simple. It's Keith Poole. You can find me on most social media. Equip for Success for the ministry, or with the John Maxwell team, it's the John C Maxwell Group com forward slash Keith Poole for the website with him awesome. awesome Keith thank you so much for your time today Willie um, pleasure thank it's you it's been great it's been refreshing it's been encouraging it's been insightful and we're grateful we thank God for this time to get together live from the Marriott Hotel here in Florida Orlando Florida um, guys if you heard any background noise there we apologize there are people kind of walking through and stuff this is raw live podcasting happening right here um, Keith thank you so much for your time That's today a pleasure Errol thank you so much right, bless you man Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you again for joining us today on the Rising Generation Leadership Podcast. I pray you've been inspired, you've been lifted, you've been encouraged to take your personal leadership to the next level. We really encourage you guys to just take action, make it happen, do something, start somewhere, go out and change the world in some way, big or small. Guys, if you've enjoyed the podcast today, please share with your friends, share with your loved ones, your colleagues, someone out there you think might benefit from hearing this great content. And uh, if you want some more questions answering, you've got a question, email me, errol at errollawson.com. Or if you want a free 30 to 45 minute coaching session with myself around the leadership challenge or issue you're working on in your business, your church, or in your organization, please feel free to email me right away or get your booked in. It's errol at errollawson.com. Thank you again for listening. Go to our iTunes page, check it out, check out the previous episodes, give us a nice review, that'd be awesome. Really appreciate if you could do that for us. We really appreciate you just for being here and listening. Thank you so much. God bless you and we'll see you on the next episode of The Rising Generation.